welcome back to my channel. So today, ah, I'm so excited because I finally have the new Grady Hendrix book, How to Sell a Haunted House. It just came out yesterday when I started filming this. Um, and I am so excited. This is my most anticipated release of the year. Um, and so I wanted to make a dedicated vlog to this book. Grady Hendrix is one of my all-time favorite authors. I am obsessed with the man, okay? And so I knew I just needed to make a dedicated video. So here she is. She's beautiful. And I am going to, I think what I'm going to do, this is about 400 pages. So I think every 100 pages we're going to check in together and then I think I'm, I might do a spoiler section at the end. So if you've already read this book, you want to talk spoilers, if you have no interest in reading this book, which what the fuck are you doing with your life, um, you can watch that part. But if you haven't read this book yet and you just want opinions, you can watch the first part of the video and then I will definitely warn you when spoilers start. I will mark it everywhere and so yeah. So that way if you've read this we can kind of do a little discussion together. If you haven't read it you'll still get my review. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump right in. So yeah, make sure you like this video if you liked it and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my other horror book talks, my horror book vlogs, my horror book reviews, recommendations, everything horror. Stick around. Uh, it's the 18th, January 18th. This came out yesterday. Um, it was delivered last night. You saw me running down my steps to go get it. So yeah, I read 100 pages last night. So I figured we would check in. So basically we are following this woman named Louise and she is about 40, I think, late 30s. And um, she has this uh, five-year-old daughter and she's a single mom. You know, her and her boyfriend had a kid in her 30s and they never got married. They broke up. So she is, you know, a single mom and she gets a phone call from her brother, Mark, who is the biggest piece of shit. Like Mark, we don't like Mark. We hate Mark. Okay. Like Mark, who... Who let you live? <laughs> like, Mark, what is your purpose in life? Mark kind of reminds me of my neighbor downstairs. We're not even going to get into that. Mark calls her and he's like, huh, by the way, mom and dad are dead. They were in a car accident last night. And she's like, what the fuck? Oh, actually, no, it was like two days ago they were in a car accident and died. And she's like, and you're just calling me now to tell me this. Like, Mark, oh, Mark, 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 Mark. Um, so, so she has to fly back home to her hometown to kind of go through some things and deal with, you know, the house and all the legal aspects um, surrounding your parents' death. And it's very, it was very heartbreaking for me because if you guys know, like the death of a parent or parents is very, very triggering to me. And it's something that just destroys me because it's something I think about all the time. It's it's just triggering subject matter. It's not that I can't read about those things. It's just that they make me depressed. So I cried a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I cried a little bit when her parents died. And um, so now, you know, she's just kind of dealing with all the bullshit that comes along and responsibility that comes along when someone dies. So she goes to her parents' house and, you know, th they need to go through their belongings and we learn how much of a piece of shit Mark is even further and it's just all character development so far. We meet her her aunt and her great aunt and her cousins and we just start learning more and more about this family in depth. All character development and the mom, she was like a puppeteer. She worked at some kind of puppet place. Uh, I don't really know. But she has a puppet and doll collection. And she was saying, you know, the one puppet specifically was always really creepy to her. And, 
you know, she goes into the house and the TV's on and the puppet's sitting there and we're like, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, we know where this is gonna go. So that's kind of all I'm gonna say. Uh, so far it's just straight character development and we can tell like something's gonna go down with this whole doll plot. Okay, hi, so it is the next day. I got around page 200, 205, so I am around the 50% mark and I am just absolutely loving this so far. So, you know, we're just kind of getting to the horror aspect of this book. I'd say around page 120-ish is when we started getting little glimpses of the horror and kind of what is going on in this house and what's going on with the puppets and dolls <laughs> situation. Um, so you know that's when the horror aspect kicked in but so far this book has been pretty much nothing but like character development, family drama, tea, <laughs> like that sort of thing. And you guys know I am a sucker for a slow burn, character developed, character driven, drama tea filled book. Like that's just what I always love. And looking at like the books that I give five stars, it's like a similar theme that I love, you know? So, you know, we're just learning about this brother and sister and kind of what things happened in their childhood that kind of led their family to go their separate ways and you know they didn't really talk to each other and we're kind of learning more about like the events that unfolded in their childhood and their childhood trauma so I really just enjoy that aspect of the of this book I know some people might not like it they might think that it's boring but to me that's what I love in a book so now that I am halfway, we just got to like the first major horror thing that happened and I was like on the edge of my seat. I was like, oh my god, like what the fuck? I was actually like cringing at this one part <laughs> and I'm just having such a fun time. I can't wait to keep reading and see where this goes. Um, you know, there are some things that are kind of predictable that I saw coming, but you know, we'll get into that in the spoilers, but I'm just, I'm having so much fun so far. It's so fun. It's like child's play meets Annabelle meets a family drama with like tea. <laughs> I just, it's so good. It's so good. Okay, hi. I'm kind of multitasking here. I'm literally working. I'm logged into the phone. If it starts ringing, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to edit this. Um, <laughs> hopefully, I have blue light glasses on and I have a ring light on. I'm sorry, this whole situation is a mess this morning. I, Anyways, <laughs> I got to around the 300 page mark. I'm on, on page 307. So I have about 100 pages left, plus a couple pages. This book got batshit wild crazy bananas and I I love it. I can't wait to find out where it goes. It just reminds me of like child's play. Like it's just so ridiculous that the horror is like comical, you know, in that typical Grady Hendrix style. And we also got like a chapter from Mark. So we like got to know Mark a little bit more and we're learning their kind of childhood trauma. And I really like the tie in between like haunted, you know, like the haunted house and the ha their haunted past. And I just really am enjoying this. It's just a fun time. It's not like super spooky horror. It's just like fun and also, there was like some gore in here and it's wild. I like it. I'm curious to see where it ends up, but I am like attached to all the characters in this book. I am just obsessed with them. I just want the best for them. You know what I mean? <laughs> but anyways, we'll talk more tomorrow. Hopefully I can finish this tonight. We'll see. Um, 
anyways hopefully um, I can finish this and I do work at my therapy job tomorrow so I might wake up early just so I can do like my final review and some spoilers we'll see I would literally have to wake up at 5 a.m. but you guys are worth it <laughs> okay hi I did it it's Saturday it's the next day and I finished how to sell a haunted house so I'm gonna give you my final kind of review wrap up and then I'm gonna give you a couple minutes not a couple minutes I don't <laughs> that's too long I'm gonna give you a minute to click away and then I'm just gonna mention a couple spoilers so my overall review for this book is it the five star prediction that I thought it was going to be let me start off by saying this okay this book is going to be very controversial depending on your taste. I've seen a lot of five star reviews. I've seen a lot of two, three star reviews. The reviews are kind of all over the place. It's really going to depend on what your preferences are when it comes to horror and just books in general. So I will say this, if you are someone that loves a character driven book, this is for you. If you are someone that you don't care about character development, you're all like plot twists, this might not be for you. It's very slow and very character driven. If you are someone where you're looking for a book that's going to be super scary and crazy, this probably isn't the book for you. <laughs> if you are someone that likes the haunted doll trope, just like creepy haunted dolls, haunted, well this one's about haunted puppets mostly. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, if you like movies like Child's Play, um, you know, if you're a fan of Chucky, like this book is for you. Um, it just depends. Like it really just depends. And also like I didn't find this book super scary. I didn't find it crazy. Like, oh yeah, it was crazy. I didn't find it super, um, like scary, terrifying, that sort of thing. It was very cheesy, very corny. It reminded me of like a corny, 80s horror movie that's all I can say about this one but with all that being said I gave this book five stars you guys I really loved it you guys know I'm a sucker for a slow character driven book family drama the plot was there I love just weird corny 80s horror movies um I was expecting, like I went into this one expecting it to be weird, expecting it to have those speculative elements, and so it ended up really working for me. When I don't like speculative elements are in books like, you know, thrillers where it's used as a plot twist, where it's just kind of so out of nowhere where you're like, what the fuck? This one, I was expecting it to get crazy, I was expecting it to have those weird plot twists that are just supernatural in nature you know like I was expecting it and it definitely delivered I I love this book I love it I really do at first I was like oh it's more like a four star but the end just wrapped it all up for me I ended up giving it five stars it definitely like I said it definitely goes there in like a weird corny 80s sort of way where you're like what the fuck is this but I just had such a fun time. The ending made me cry. Like it was just beautifully wrapped up in the end in that perfect Rainy Hendrix sort of way. And I just know like not everyone's going to love this book. So listen, don't come for me <laughs> when you read this and you might not like it. I'm warning you. It's not for everyone. Also, don't come for Grady Hendrix in my comments because I'm obsessed with him, okay? I'm literally obsessed with him and I'm low-key offended when people insult him, okay? I also just love how this is a blend of, you know, horror. So it's like haunted, speculative elements, but also there's some comedy in there, like a little bit of comedy sprinkled in that made me chuckle here and there. 
Also, it was grief horror, which really gets me good. Um, I've cried when reading this book, I laughed when reading this, reading this book, and I was really just sitting here jaw dropped for so many scenes in this book because it was wild. It was just the perfect blend. I think he did a great job at blending all those factors together. And I mean, I was, I, I don't know, I couldn't expect anything else, you know? And I would say, uh, still my, uh, this, my Southern, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and My Best Friend's Exorcism are still my top two favorites. This I would put in maybe third place, but all three of those books I've given, I've given five stars, so. But anyways, I'm obsessed. I love this book so much. So I am going to give you a minute to click away right now. If you don't want to hear any spoilers, if you don't want me to spoil all the major plots and points of this book, I'm just going to talk about a few that really stuck out that I was like, what the fuck? Um, so yeah, if you have read this book and you want to hear like a little discussion, just keep watching. Um, and if you have no intentions of reading this book and you just want spoilers, you can keep watching, but like, what are you doing? Just go read the book, okay? So yeah, if you're choosing to click away, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that if you've watched this far. And everyone else, um, gonna wait a couple seconds to keep talking in case people still haven't clicked away. Okay. Hopefully, everyone is here just for spoilers. Hopefully, Justin's not listening because he still hasn't read the book. Um, okay, so I have my notes here. <laughs> so I just wanted to talk a about a couple things. So I had a feeling, let's talk about Mark, because I had a feeling when he was like this evil, awful person in the beginning of the book, I had a feeling that he was going to come around and make up with his sister and that, you know, they were gonna do this whole thing together, split the money for the house, blah, blah, blah. And that's exactly what happened. Mark ended up being a great brother. And it turns out the reason behind all of this, we find out that Mark, when he, wait, when Mark and Louise were kids, Louise was like five and she tried drowning him and killing him when they were kids. So now that's why Mark and Louise, like they didn't like each other and they had this falling out and they were never close as kids because of that situation. And turns out like it was because of Pupkin, the doll, the haunted puppet, um, that was basically, you know, the root of all evil in this book. And the whole thing with Pupkin is like it, the puppet possesses whoever is like wearing it and just all kinds of weird things going on in this house because of this puppet and then the, the other dolls in the house were haunted. Oh, it's a whole thing. <laughs> so because Louise was like obsessed with this pumpkin puppet, it like possessed her to try to kill her brother Mark when they were kids, right? And then I liked how we got a whole chapter about Mark in there because then we learned about Mark when he was in college, you know, he was going to school to be like a puppeteer or whatever, and he was making these pumpkin masks. And then him and his friends were wearing these pumpkin masks. And when they wore the mask, it like possessed them to do all this crazy shit. And that was the thing that I was a little confused about in this book, the whole chapter about Mark. What was that chapter? Because I'm a little confused. Someone might need to DM me or something. So um, basically when they were, when he was wearing the pumpkin mask, it, he was like terrorizing the town. He like broke into this woman's place and was trashing her shit everywhere. And then basically they said that he might have committed arson like he burned down the house with his friends in it and he never saw his friends again so he thinks that he might have accidentally killed his friends in the fire and i'm like 
did that actually happen or did that not happen? Was that just like a hallucination or something? They, he never really explained it. So I'm like, did he commit arson? Did he not? Because then he saw his friend later on in life and his friend just kind of like ignored him and didn't say anything. So I'm like, did all of that actually happen? Like, shouldn't he be in jail if that happened? I don't know if I missed something or not, but that was the only thing that I was like, wait a second, I'm a little lost. Um, I have a feeling like it didn't actually happen. Or maybe he burned down the house, but no one died. I don't know. <laughs> that, that thing, I, I, that confused me. Um, so the real, like, the first scene of, like, Pupkin in present day w doing anything crazy is when he stuck a needle in Louise's eye. And at the time that I was reading that, I had a cat hair <laughs> stuck in my eye. <laughs> so I was sitting here reading it and I was like, oh my god, this, like, hurts, right? And then I'm reading with one eye because this one has cat hair in it. <laughs> It literally felt like I was being poked with needles and then I was scared. I was like, oh my god, maybe the puppet's after me too. <laughs> so that was like the first kind of sinister thing that he did. And then of course, you know, Mark jumped in and shot him a whole bunch of times. That didn't do anything. They tried chopping him up in a freaking uh, Vitamix blender. That didn't do anything. They tried so many methods of killing this little fucker and it didn't do anything. <laughs> So then the other crazy like gore filled part was when Mark was wearing pupkin because they were trying to like kill the thing and then the pup puppet was going to kill Louise so then the puppet was like oh you have to put me on your hand or I'm going to kill your sister so he did it and then he couldn't get it off and then he was possessed by pupkin so then Louise comes in with a fucking chainsaw or circular saw and chops his fucking arm off bitch <laughs> she just sawed her fucking brother's arm off what the hell so then he you know ends up in the hospital now he's missing an arm i was like this is wild this is some crazy wild shit that's going down right now like that's how i knew this was gonna get bad shit bananas and it did um, so yeah, that was a very enjoyable scene for me. I loved it. Um, and then, so basically to wrap it all up, like what happened with the puppet? So her family hires this like spiritual woman and she's like, oh, well, haunted puppets and dolls are actually curses brought on by a demon. So it's not that a demon is haunting you, it's that the demon's curse is cursing you. Does that make sense? So then she's like, oh, I think you're being cursed by a demon. But then they find out it's actually Freddy. So Freddy was Louise's mom, Nancy, her brother who died when he was five years old. And no one really knew for sure what happened to him. But turns out Nancy also, tried drowning him when he was five years old and he died and now he he is kind of inside of this uh pumpkin and he's a ghost that's kind of haunting people because he doesn't understand you know what's going on now that um Nancy, his sister, isn't around. He's like, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Pupkin's obsessed with finding Nancy. So in order to get him back to Nancy in the afterlife, they had to go dig up Freddy's body with the help of the imaginary dog spider. Listen, this is so wild, like, I feel, I feel like I'm high right now. So, so they had to get the imaginary dog to help dig up Freddy. And then once they could dig up Freddy, then Pupkin saw, oh shit, I'm actually dead. And then they were able to send Freddy into the afterlife with Nancy. Listen, I, <laughs> this is wild. I loved this book. Okay, I loved it. I loved it so much. 
it's just wild it just reminds me of just like a crazy corny 80s movie and I loved every fucking second of it I loved the character development and the grief horror and everything just tied together so beautifully at the end the ending I loved that I really I just I don't know I like how it was kind of a happy ending you know everyone ended up being okay and you know her daughter was possessed by Pupkin at one point and we weren't sure like if the daughter was even gonna make it it was just wild and I think he blended everything perfectly into one another and listen I'm a Grady Hendrix stan what more can I say what more can I say <laughs> and then I just really love how like her and Mark have this like great bond at the end and they, they sold the house and split the money and that, you know, now she calls Mark whenever she's dealing with her grief and oh my god, I cried. I'm about to cry. I love that. I am a delusional right now. I'm gonna go, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.